Hello, my name's Sarita and I'm speaking to you today from Solhenge and I'm here to help you understand the truth about who you are. Now, what I wanted to share with you today was the nature of reality and I'm really excited about doing this video because I finally feel as if I'm in a place where I have enough experience and the right words and understanding to really grasp the nature of reality, why we are here and what is going on, what is reality? And I'm really excited to share it with you as well. And I think that we are only really coming into a place now where humanity as a whole can begin to understand this because what's happening is, is that science and technology have caught up so much that they are beginning to validate and explain to us what is going on. And this is something that, you know, I've been searching for this answer, why are we here, for, you, for my whole life basically. And the reason that I've been obsessed with this is because I've had a lot of weird stuff happen to me in my life, stuff that is not considered to be normal. And I'll give you the biggest example of this. When I was three or four, I was in my garden with my brother and I was looking up at an apple, apple tree and I levitated off the floor. And at the time, I just thought it was normal. You know, you're a kid and you think it's normal. But loads of stuff kept happening to me. And I never talked to my brother about what had happened that day, but it had stayed with me. And many more strange things, which we would consider out of the norm, kept happening to me over my life. They just didn't fit in with the nature of reality that I was being told was normal by people in my life. You know, your teachers, your parents, your, all of those kind of things. And what happened to me on my wedding day is my brother came up to me and he said to me, Sarita, I saw you levitate that day in the garden. And that was like the best wedding present ever because it really validated to me that I hadn't imagined it. Even though I knew I hadn't imagined it, imagined it, it was really good to have a witness, <laughs> you know, in my madness. So that was just something huge that showed me that reality wasn't quite what everybody said it was. And all of our really enlightened teachers who we revere, so I'll just take Jesus because he's one of the most well-known, have all managed to do things which were out of the norm. So, you know, he walked across water, he manifested food out of thin air, apparently. And basically all that was happening was he just knew how reality worked and how to manipulate reality, if you like. And so what I'm gonna to explain to you now is what reality is so that you can begin to understand how you too can change your reality. Now, basically, in order to grasp this, you need to understand that everything that you can see is a projection of what you are creating from the inside out. So everything that I'm looking at in this room right now only exists because I'm looking at it. It's like I'm wearing a pair of virtual reality goggles, okay? And so I'm in this virtual reality landscape. And if I step outside of my room, what this is do what these goggles are doing is they're creating new literally a whole new world in every now, in every place I move out of, they're creating this reality because there is nothing beyond what you can't see okay? You are perceiving there are things outside of what you can see, but they don't exist. So basically, the nature of reality, and this is the way you've really got to understand it, is that you are in a hologram. You are walking around in a holodeck. It's a light show, which is a projection of your thoughts and your feelings, okay? Now, Basically, what science has discovered is that everything in reality, so every single thing that you are looking at is made of light, okay? And when this light manifests into third dimensional reality, it becomes a pulse. So basically, you're looking at me and I appear solid to you, but I'm not. 
I am light pulsing super fast. And what's happening is your eyes are taking in this information, light information, and your brain is organizing it in such a way that you, that things, it's like taking out the pulse and it appears solid to you. So that everything that I'm looking at in this room is made of light and it's pulsing so fast and my brain is interpreting it and making it feel solid. And then we've got our other senses, you know, our other five senses, and in fact there are more, obviously there's six senses and things like that, but our five senses are also interpreting this information and giving them a quality of appearing solid in our manifested reality. So you've really got to sit with this idea that the room you're in and that everything that you're looking at is just a projection that you are projecting from the inside out through these kind of virtual reality goggles. You are walking around in a holodeck, a hologram, okay? Now, basically, this hologram is being created by you, okay? So, and we can really understand this now because we have such technology that it's normal for our children or you, I don't play computer games, but for our children to play computer games. So my son's always on his Xbox. And we, so he's playing a game and he's immersed in the game and the controls are in his hands, okay? So he's he's got the controls. And, but so what's happening with our computer game, this virtual reality computer game that we're in, is that our control center is not in our hands. Our control center is predominantly in our heart and our brain energy centers. And we've got other centers within our body. We've got our other energy centers and they all come into play. They're all part of the control. And basically, you know, since the dawn of time, shamans, you know, ancient, you know, the ancient civilizations knew that these centers, these energy centers in our body, our body is a technology. It's a technology. You really need to understand that. And that's why all ancient traditions tell you to do yoga and meditation because what those things do is they allow you to really perceive what is inside of yourself and to go into the technology of your own being and begin to understand how it works because we are in a game. This is a game. Reality is a game. And I'm going to talk about why it's a game in a minute, but basically we're in this virtual reality game. And obviously when you first come into a game, you've got the controls, you don't know what the, how the game works, you don't really know how the controls work, you don't know what you've got to collect, when and how, or how all the levels work. You learn the game as you go on, and that is what we are doing here. Because basically what's happened is the name of the game is that when we arrive, when we are birthed into this reality, we don't really understand how it works and we learn as we go along. That's wisdom. And basically the reason why all of our ancient teachers, all of our most enlightened beings have told us again and again and again to go into our hearts because they understood that that was the control center of our reality. And you know, since the dawn of time, you know, shamans say this is an illusion, it's a dream. The Mayans have said this is an illusion. You know, uh, quantum physics is now telling us that the highest probability ever is that we are living in a virtual reality. You know, science is beginning to back this up now. And this is what is actually going on. And this is why you are manifesting your reality in every moment. Literally, what you think and feel creates your projection, your light projection show, your holographic universe in front of you, and then you experience that. So that's why you can only change your life from the within. The within changes the without. And that's what every spiritual teacher has told us since the dawn of time. And then the other thing that every spiritual teacher has told us since the dawn of time, dawn of time, is come into the present moment. Now, why do they keep saying that? Why, for example, does Joe Dispenza keep saying, come into the present moment, create your reality from your now? Why do people keep saying there's no past and no future? Because there isn't any, there is only the now. And when you are in heart-centered awareness, 
what happens is you come entirely into the present moment and you create your reality anew in each moment. Because what most of us are doing is we are creating our reality, this virtual reality, from subconscious programs that we accumulated when we were little. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll understand that because basically when we're children, we're very susceptible because we're in an alpha brainwave state, to receive programming. We're collating information really fast. And unfortunately, because, you know, this is just the way things have panned out, we were given programs. And those programs, nine, you know, just, you know nearly 100% of those programs are derogatory for us. They tend to be programs around lack, around rejection, around unworthiness, around loss. And so we have been using those subconscious programs to project our manifested reality in front of us. And that's why coming into the present moment is so important because when you come into the present moment, you become aware of your subconscious programs and you no longer use them because you're in present moment awareness. And this gives you the capacity to create an entirely new life for yourself. This is why you need to do heart-centered, present moment awareness techniques if you want to have the most extraordinary life in the world. And obviously, if you are living through the technology of your heart, you are going to be experiencing the elevated states of being, which are compassion, love, forgiveness, um, gratitude. And then those are what you are going to project through your 3D virtual reality goggles and create your holodeck with. And it's just so amazing when you begin to comprehend this, that we are actually in a game. Because the more you comprehend it, the more you begin to understand how the controls work. And that's what's happening to me. And I think it's what's happening to many of you is that you're beginning to work out how to be conscious manifestors. And it's just amazing when you start to work with the technology. And I'm just going to give you a really simple example. So I'm just understanding this more and more. And what I'm doing is I'm just projecting my heart and my brain in coherence to, I'm just projecting things out from my heart and mind into the holodeck and then they're just coming back manifested. So really easy example. Um, three days ago, um, I'm building a retreat center here. Well, it's kind of nearly built, but anyway. So my husband has just finished the deck, which is, um, you know, we built a deck in front of two tents basically, which are in the woods. And we went down three days ago to admire the finished work. And my husband turns to me and he goes, Sarita, you know, we really need furniture now for the deck. And basically, I'm building this whole retreat center. I do not know how, with what. I don't know how I'm, being, I'm building it. But basically, I'm just building it using the using um, the, the hologram because um, things are just arriving for me. So anyway, so standing on the deck, and I just went, I literally said to my husband, Hamish, um, I'm not going to buy the furniture. I'm just going to call it in. And so I spent, I cannot even tell you, what, 30 seconds connected to my heart, connected to my mind, imagined how great it would be if the furniture just arrived. And then I just let it go. And I completely forgot about it. And yesterday, yesterday, so it was like two days, yesterday, my sister-in-law sends me a message on Facebook going, do you want this garden furniture? Because I'm upgrading. And it was a sofa, a chair and a table in perfect miniature because our deck is not very big that she's giving away for free two days that took to come. And for me, it's just another validation that what you put out comes back to you. That's it. And you need the faith and the trust and the belief in that for it to work. And in order to have that faith and trust and belief, you need to be in the present moment. You really need to understand what is going on. And I'm really hoping that this explanation makes sense to you. I mean, just let this information land in you. Really just look at the room that you're in right now and understand that that is a light projection holograph which is coming out of you. It's a huge thing to understand. But once you start getting it, you begin to realize that you are the controller of this. And in order to become the supersonic controller, you've got to master your mind.
And that's what meditation is all about. You've got to master your mind. You've got to master your mind enough so that it sort of can come into focus with your heart and you've got to use the brain in your heart. And as I've told you in other videos, your brain is made of neurites, but your heart brain, the brain in the middle of your heart center is made of more neurites than your brain. It's made up of the same stuff and it has memory. So you've got to master yourself. You've got to master this, you know, the monkey mind that keeps telling us stuff from our subconscious reality that we're unworthy and we don't deserve to have stuff and all of that good things. We've got to master that. We've got to calm it down. We've got to come into heart brain coherence. And that's why Tibetan heart meditation rocks. That is the one. It puts you into heart brain coherence. And you, if you want to have a happy, fulfilled life, you need to master yourself. You need to master your mind and you need to be able to project from the inside out the reality that you want to come back and become your holographic light show. So that's what's going on. Now, <laughs> why are we here? <laughs> Ooh, this is the biggie, isn't it? So um, there are a lot of theories about why we're actually here. What is completely clear to me is that this is a game of evolution. And the game is to remember who you are as God. For me, that's just absolutely clear because no matter what happens in this virtual reality experience, we are always evolving. Even if bad stuff is happening to you, you're learning about the nature of who you are through that experience. And so what I think happens is we come in, we're birthed into this reality and we can't remember why we've come here. Because obviously, like I've said, if you're playing any computer game, you don't know how it works. You can't know how it works, otherwise the game's up. And then what you do is you begin to experience, you experience, you experience, you experience, you experience. And as you're gaining momentum with all of these experiences, you begin to discover who you are. And sometimes you discover who you are through things that tell you who you are not. You know, if you have someone being mean to you and it doesn't resonate, then you go, well, that's not me because it doesn't feel good. So I'm not going to do that. So you're learning stuff all the time. So for me, it's absolutely clear that this is a game of evolution. And what's happening is as all these light bulbs are going off in my reality and my awareness is expanding and my perception is expanding, I'm beginning to feel more peaceful because one other thing that is completely clear to me is that we are infinite beings. Now, if you're an infinite being playing this game of virtual reality, this game of evolution, of understanding yourself, then does it really matter? Does anything really matter? And what I'm talking about is the big things, you know, the things that really hurt us, you know, when people we love die, you know, how painful is that? When our hearts get broken, when we people we love get ill, when all of those massive things happen, we are so embroiled in the drama because we're in the game. But if you really understood that you are an infinite being and that you are a soul playing this virtual reality game, would it really matter that much? Could you let go of the drama? Could you let go knowing that you would see your loved one again if they died? Because, you know, when I watch my son playing Xbox, he's, you know, he's in the absolute throes of the game. It's all massive drama. He's shouting at the screen. Then someone kills him. Bang. He's really, really angry. Da, 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 da. And then two minutes later, he's forgotten it. That doesn't affect him anymore because it's a game. It's a game. And if you started to look at everything that happened in your life as a game of evolution, would that not change your perspective? Because this explains so much. It explains reincarnation. It explains how when we're born, we have this thing beating inside of us that understands love. We all at some unconscious level, most of us feel that we are a soul. Most of us feel that there's more than just this physical reality and we can't explain it. We have this longing for connection, this longing to go back to from what, you know, to where we've come from. It's like a longing to go home. And there's that thing, it's like that thing that beats in you, that passion, that desperate yearning for joy, for fulfillment, for all of those things. And that's what tells me that I have a soul. And 
I've seen enough evidence. I've had so many strange things happen to me around people dying. I know, I've seen people after they've died, they've come back and spoken to me. I saw my grandmother's die three days before she died. I've seen enough, I've seen enough that I know that there is something after this. So if we are playing this virtual reality game and we are infinite souls having a finite experience and all we're trying to do is to climb the levels as if we were in a computer game, wouldn't that make you feel peaceful? Wouldn't that allow you to just drop all of the drama and drop the pain and come into a heart-centered awareness. And then obviously once you're in your heart center, you're projecting peace, love, joy, gratitude out. You're not projecting fear, 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 fear. That's what most of us are running on. And that's why our virtual reality programs are you know, dramatic, why they're painful to us. But you see how it is when you see these enlightened beings who are so happy, they, they're not affected. They, they just observing it, they know they just know it's a game. It's a game of life and evolution. And then you've got the ultimate question. Why are we playing this game of evolution? And my favorite theory on this one is by the scientist Greg Braden. And he believes that we are playing this game so that we can learn enough because we're going somewhere better. He thinks it's a virtual reality game that we can play thousands and thousands and thousands of times. We can, we can, you know, nuclear react everybody, murder people, get upset, jealous, do all of everything wrong so that we can elevate our awareness because the end game is to arrive at a place which is basically heaven on earth so that we don't, you know, muck it up. <laughs> and I love that theory, but maybe we're just playing the game for its own sake. Who knows? That is a question that each of you need to answer for yourself. But anyway, so there you go. That is my take. That is my take on what, what reality is. And I hope it resonates with you. And what I would ask you to do is just sit with this information because when this information really started to land in me, it kind of blew my head off. I really just had to sit with it, mull it over. Was it resonating with me? You know, I had to, because we've got these analytical minds, I had to put it in boxes, sort it out, you know, try and gather the information, make it, you know, correlate and work for me. But I have to tell you, I've known this in my heart for a long time. It's like I've known since I was, you know, tiny, that I've come from somewhere else. And I know we think we're all earthlings and we are having the experience on earth, but really we have come from somewhere else. And that's the longing that we're longing to get back to. So yeah, let this sit with you, see how it lands for you. Let me know what you think and spend a bit of your time in the next few weeks walking around and perceiving that you are wearing this holodeck virtual, you know, 3D reality mask and See what happens to you when you try to change things in the holodeck from the inside. Thank you very much for listening.